Well, good morning, Pennsylvania Conference for Women! Woo! It is such an honor and a privilege to be here, and I thank Jess Black and her team for inviting me back, because ladies, they know that there are very few things that I enjoy more than talking about what I like to call Carla's Pearls, my mm -mm, hard earned and hard learned pearls after being a woman on Wall Street for 30 years. I dare say, ladies, that I have learned a few things about not only surviving, but more importantly, thriving in the seat that you sit in or the seat that you aspire to sit in. And that's frankly what the pearls and expect to win and strategize to win are all about. But Jess and team have asked me this morning once again to get a little bit personal. They said, Carla, why don't you talk about the pearls that you would have given to your 25-year-old self just a couple of years ago. But <laughs> so this morning, I'd like to give you the benefit of what I've learned throughout this journey of over 50 some years. I'd like to give you the benefit of that because I have indeed been honored and privileged to learn a lot. So here's how it goes. Dear Carla, the first thing that I'd like to tell you is own your power. Own your power. You are uniquely and wonderfully made, and you have extraordinary power. Never let anyone make you doubt that which is uniquely you. When people are starting to question whether or not you can, and you start to doubt whether or not you can, red flag, you have just given away your power. You need to know that you know that you know that if you have been invited into the room, you belong in the room. And if you belong in the room, then you have a seat at the table. And if you have a seat at the table, you have a responsibility to speak. Do not sit in the room that you have been invited to with the chair at the table and keep your mouth closed. You must let the room hear your voice because when they are used to hearing your voice, they will solicit your voice. And after they get in the habit of soliciting your voice, you can use silence as power. So when you don't say anything, they'll say, oh, Carla, what are you thinking? Surely you have. And that's what you want them to do is ask for you to speak. Own your power. It has been given to you. Do not waste it. And oh, by the way, Carla, another secret is in order to grow your power, give it away. Give it away. When you empower other people, you magnify and amplify your impact. The next thing I'd like to tell you, Carla, is you must be comfortable taking risks. You must be comfortable taking risks. It is important that you take risks because that's the only way that you can understand and define your power. If you never reach far enough to hit that wall, you won't know how far you can go. And let me tell you one other thing, Carla. Here's the deal. The only reason people don't take risks is that they're scared. <laughs> they're just scared. It's fear. And hear me clearly. Fear has no place in your success equation. Fear has no place in your success equation. Anytime you approach anything in your life from a position of fear, you will always underpenetrate that opportunity. And anytime you feel it creeping up the back of your neck, just remind yourself of that old Southern saying, fear is just false evidence of things appearing real. <laughs> it's really not there. Because what's the worst that can happen if you take a risk and it doesn't work out? So you fail. 
But guess what? Failure always brings you a gift. And that gift is called experience. Now you know how to do it better. Now you know how to do it differently. Now you know how to do it successfully. At the margin, it is always worth taking the risk. And if you are faced with a risk and you're not sure if you should go for it, ask yourself three questions. Will this new thing give you skills and experiences that you would not get if you stayed in your current seat another 12 months? Second question, will this new thing expose you to people, relationships, and networks that you would not get if you stayed in your current seat another 12 months? Third question, will this new thing create new branches on your personal decision tree of opportunity, i.e. you could go off and do some other things that you wouldn't have been able to do if you stayed in your current seat another 12 months? If the answer to all three of those questions is yes, you should absolutely take the risk. The third piece of advice, Carla, is remember that it is easier to beg for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Sometimes you ask someone for their permission and they don't even have the power to tell you no, but because you asked them, you just gave them the power to tell you no. Always default to going ahead. Don't ask for permission, just go forward. If you make a mistake, somebody will surely tell you that you should not have done that. And when they tell you that, you say, oh, so sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> but now you have the experience, and that experience will be valuable to you. The fourth piece of advice, and Carla, this is a big one. If you meet somebody, a guy or a gal, that you are interested in, and they tell you that you are too much for them, they are right. <laughs> Do not apologize for your accomplishments. Do not apologize for your power. You have worked too hard to get there or it is an insult to him who gave it to you. Do not dim your light for somebody else's convenience. You will find that person that will support and amplify the power that is you. The fifth piece of advice, Carla, is you must celebrate your victories often. There'll be lots of things that will happen in life that might make you sad, that might make you pause. So when the great things happen, no matter how small, for you or for those who are close to you, celebrate. When it's your birthday, celebrate all month. <laughs> when you get promoted, celebrate all week. Stand there and feel it. Don't be in such a hurry to go to the next accomplishment that you don't sit in that one that is right before you. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. And oh yeah, Carla, with respect to your career, you don't ask, you don't get. You don't ask, you don't get. There is one person that has responsibility for your career, and that is you. It is not anybody else's responsibility, especially not HR, to decide when it's time for you to go to the next role, when it's time for you to get a pay raise, when it is time for you to get promoted. It is your responsibility to know when that time is, and it is your responsibility to ask, especially with respect to compensation. There's nobody sitting around saying, oh, Carla might like to get paid more money. <laughs> it is your responsibility to understand the market value of your seat. And when you understand the market value of your seat and you are in fact delivering good value, you should ask to make sure that you're getting paid the market value of your seat. And oh, by the way, when you are going into a new role, that's when you have maximum leverage to negotiate for the money. And never let your last job be your anchor towards what you're gonna get paid in the new job.
If you know the market value of the seat, you ask for the market value of the seat. And when someone says, oh, but Carla, you were getting paid that in the last job, your response should be, what I was getting paid in the last job, frankly, is irrelevant to this opportunity. You and I both agree I'll be the best candidate and I'll hit the ground running. If your, va if your offer is within the market value of the seat, I will hit that bid. And remember, anytime somebody is looking to hire somebody new, the number that is in their budget to hire somebody is the highest possible number that that seat should be paid. They never put a low number in the budget because nobody wants to go back to the boss and ask for that number to be raised when they see a new candidate. So always know the number that's in the budget is the highest value for that seat. And it's your job to know exactly what that is. My next piece of advice, Carla, don't worry about making mistakes. Mistakes are a valid and valuable part of your life. If you don't make a mistake, that means you're not reaching far enough. You want to reach far enough so that you hit that barrier and know where that line is. And oh, by the way, making a mistake, Carla, does not make you special. Everybody makes a mistake. What makes you special is how and if you get up. And it's important that you understand that resiliency is valuable and not everybody has it, but you have been endowed with the goods. You make a mistake, take the blessing of the lesson and move on. Every experience that you have gives you one or two things, a blessing or a lesson, and both are valuable. Either you get that thing you were going for or now you know how to do it differently. But it's important that you take that and move on and not carry the mistake as baggage. Because Carla, baggage is heavy and it will create a competitive disadvantage for you. The next piece of advice, study, understand, and forgive your parents. <laughs> they are just people. They did the best they had and they did the, be the best they could with what they had. And that's all you have to do is understand that. They gave you life, but do not let their mistakes anchor you to one spot. They are not your excuse for not flying. So it's important that you understand who they are. Because you know, as the saying goes, if you don't understand your history, you will become it. So make sure that you're clear. Embrace them, love them, leverage what they gave you, and move on. The next piece of advice, life is a journey. You have a long runway. Don't be in such a hurry to go towards things. Enjoy every single lesson that life brings you. Because here's something that I've learned. When life comes to teach you a lesson, if you don't pass the test, you will repeat the class. So it's important that when things happen to you, you stop and you ask the question, why did this happen? How did I get here? How did I contribute to this very moment? Because surely, if you understand your power, you contributed in some way to that moment. Maybe you failed to understand the importance of a relationship. Maybe you failed to understand how important relationships are in your success equation. No matter what industry you are in, no matter what you are doing, you will not maximize your success without somebody else's relationship. It's important that you invest. And if you invest in no one else, you must invest in a sponsor relationship. And for those of you who don't know, the sponsor is the person that is carrying your paper into the room. This is the person that behind closed doors will argue passionately on your behalf as to why you should get a promotion, why you should get the raise, why you should get the next great opportunity. Make no mistake, this is the person that is spending their valuable political and social capital on you. And while your performance is important, because it may raise your level of visibility such that a sponsor may be attracted to you, the relationship is more important. Because here's how it goes. Your ability to ascend in any job that you choose, Carla, will be a function 
of somebody's judgment. Judgment about whether or not you're ready, judgment about whether or not you'll be successful, and judgment about whether or not the team will follow you. And judgments are directly influenced by relationships. Let me prove it to you. Everyone in this room has power, hard-earned, personal, influential currency. But I ask you, ladies and a few brave gentlemen, how many people in this room will use their hard-earned, personal, influential currency on somebody that they do not know? Mm-hmm, exactly. So remember that your performance currency may get your name on the short list that's being discussed behind closed doors. But when your name is called, if no one in that room can speak on your behalf, they simply go to the next name. And it has nothing to do with your ability to do the job, but everything to do with whether or not somebody knows you well enough to speak on your behalf. So when all else fails, Carla, invest in the relationships. And then finally, I say to you, as my good friend Judith Adu said to me, this is real life. This ain't no dress rehearsal. So make sure that you go for it all of the time. Put your foot on the gas no matter what it is and go for it. You have absolutely nothing to lose. Don't fall prey to this so-called imposter syndrome because you indeed do have the power. If you have been brought to that moment, you have everything that you need in order to be successful. You either have the intellect, you have the experience, or you have somebody in your network that is willing to help you. Exercise your power. Use everything that's in your network. And so often, we fail to use the network even though it's one of the most valuable tools in the tool chest because we are afraid that if we ask someone for help that we now may be exposed as not knowing that thing which we think everybody think we ought to know or we are afraid that if we ask for help, somebody may turn us down. Well, ladies, if you ask someone for help and they turn you down, there is only one word, next. <laughs> Where one won't, another one will. But you can't allow one person's rejection to stop you on your journey to maximizing your success. If you are stuck and you're not sure whether or not you should try something, always default to the try. Always default to the try. You already are clear about what no looks like, so why wouldn't you play for yes? Always play for yes. And as I close, I say to you, Carla, know that you know that you know that you have all the goods that you need in order to maximize your success. You need only expect and strategize to win. Sincerely, Carla at 54. <laughs> Thank you, Pennsylvania Conference for Women.